In this video, we're going to talk about 2D and 3D Arrange in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to be talking about 2D and 3D Arrange in Fusion 360. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what do I need these tools for? Well, 2D Arrange is very handy for us to orient a grouping of parts in a specified area. So if you are 3D printing, especially on an at-home desktop FFF type machine, it can help you set up all your parts in a certain orientation so that they fit in your build volume. The 3D Arrange is great for powder bed parts. So if you can build your parts up vertically, then making use of 3D Arrange can be extremely helpful. There are a handful of things that we do need to know, and we need to know how to access the tools. So the first thing I want to talk about to get started is find a part that you have. It can be anything. Just get a single part. In this case, I just drew a little link here, just something that I could have to show the way in which we can 3D arrange. Then what we need to do is go into our user preferences. And for turning on 2D arrange, that's going to be in the design section of your general preferences. And there's an option to enable arrange and simplify tools. The simplify tools come into play in things like simulation, but turning them on here and applying that allows you to get access to modify, arrange, and modify, simplify. In order to enable 3D arrange, it's actually going to be a preview feature. So under preferences, we want to go down to our preview features, and I'm going to search for 3D. Notice that this is located in the manufacturer section, but if we turn on 3D arrange and apply it, we should be able to get an option that allows us to use Arrange in 3D by selecting it in this drop-down inside of our Arrange options. So the second thing that we need to know about Arrange is it needs to use components. Right now in this design, I have a single body, and I need to have the correct number of bodies as components in my design in order for this to work. So the way that I'm going to make use of this is I'm going to start a new design. I'm going to set up my units. Once I have my unit set at inch, I then need to save this design before I can go on to the next step. So I'm just going to call this a range example. Doesn't really matter what it's called, but the main reason we're doing this is because we want to insert our arrange part. So I'm going to take my 3D arrange part and simply drag it in. This is automatically going to make it a component, and I'm just going to say OK to place it wherever it is. Now that we have this, there are two more steps to this process. The first is for me to select this, and I'm just going to create a rectangular pattern. I'm going to select the direction as my x-axis, and I'm going to begin dragging this out. For the second direction, I'm going to use my y-axis, so I'm just going to rotate this around and pull this back. So you'll notice that these are in three dimensions, and I've got three instances in the y direction, and I've got three instances in the x direction. Now that I have all these components, the next thing that I want to do is I want to define the boundary that I want to arrange them in. I'm going to do this with a sketch and just pick a plane. For me, I'm going to pick the top plane and I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to do a center rectangle about the origin and I'm going to make it 10 by 7 inches. I don't even know if these parts are going to fit in here, but this is a good test. So now I have a rectangular boundary and I've got parts that I need to fit into it. So we're going to go to Modify, Arrange, and in this case, we're going to do a 2D Arrange. The objects are going to be all of my components, so I can shift select them all inside the browser. Then I'm going to move on to the envelopes. For the envelopes, I'm going to select this profile here, and it's going to work its magic and try to arrange them for me. You'll notice that it fits them in that very easily. We have frame width and object spacing. We can adjust those, increase or decrease them as needed. And you'll notice that we can also include a height offset. There is also a partial arrange option. So if all of them don't fit in the space, then we will be able to make some additional arranged objects, even though they don't fit. So I'm going to hit cancel on this. I'm going to modify my pattern. And instead of three, I'm going to add four instances in each direction, just add a couple more. And then I'm going to modify my sketch. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to show my dimensions. And I'm going to make this 7 by 7 inches, just make it a little bit smaller. 
So then I'm going to go back to Modify and Arrange. Again, I'm going to select all of these components. Then I'm going to go to my Envelopes and select my Sketch Profile. I'm going to allow it to try to fit, and you can see now it's not able to get all of them arranged in there. We can make adjustments to the size and figure out where they fit, but a lot of times what you're trying to do is fit as many parts as possible into a certain area. You'll also notice that we've got some options to do things like flip envelope. We can add a height offset, and we can also use things like multi envelope or grain direction. However, some of these are going to come in to advanced functionalities that you find in the extensions. So we can see exactly what happens with Arrange trying to put these together in 2D, but what happens if we want to arrange them in 3D? So we have all the same objects selected, and in this case, the Arrange is going to be based on this, but we've got Length, Width, and Height options and the Height Offset. So I'm going to say I want to fit them all within a 4-inch, and this is going to be 7 by 7-inch. Seven Notice that there's no envelope defined, and this is because, first off, it needs a plane selected. So we're going to redo our selection here, and notice that it doesn't allow this as our option. So for this, we're going to have to select a plane, and it's going to be my XY plane. Once we have our XY plane, now you can see how many objects are able to fit easily. The next thing we can do is we can modify some of these values, for example, the voxel size. I'm going to set this to 0.125, and notice that once I reduce the voxel size, which is essentially going to be uh, the size of an element that we're looking for in terms of the space that we have allowed, reducing that voxel size is allowing us to now fit all of these objects very easily. So we could reduce some of these values, 6 by 6, you can see it's trying to rearrange, but it's not able to easily get them in. And again, one thing that we could do is we could reduce our object spacing if we can have them a little bit closer. We can reduce our frame width to have the edge or the border a little bit closer and get a good idea as to how many of these are going to fit. I'm going to increase the value in one direction to 7 inches, and now we've got plenty of room to fit all of these in 3D. There are some advanced options that do become available when you start to talk about using manufacturing extensions, but for right now, you can see that this does a pretty good job. If we change the envelope size to, let's say, 4 inches by 4 inches by 8, now it can begin to stack them vertically. If we go to 10, you can see it's starting to stack them vertically as well. So it really is going to depend on your parts. Whatever part you decide to play with, you can play around with these values. Obviously what you're looking to do in reality is base this off of a build volume on your 3D printer. So for this example, I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna move on to my manufacturing workspace. In the additive section, we're gonna create a new setup. We're gonna to go to machines. I'm gonna go into the Fusion library and we're gonna take a look at SLS machines. I'm just gonna use the Formlabs Fuse 1. You can see what size it has in terms of its dimensions. We'll select this, and you'll notice that under the Arrangement option, we now see an Arrange in 3D because we turned that preview on. We can select OK, and allow it to automatically orient the parts and build them in 3D inside of that volume. These fit very easily, and if we had more parts, it would be able to continue to stack them up vertically. If you want to play around with this, again, pick whatever part you have, play around with the Arrange in 2D and the Arrange in 3D, remembering that Arrange needs to be turned on in the general user preferences, and Arrange in 3D needs to be turned on in the preview features. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. I know this was just a quick introduction, but oftentimes these new features or hidden features get overlooked by just going through the day-to-day -day modeling practices. So if you have any questions, again, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.